with pollination and fertilization. Last uh, slide, we had started with nature favors cross pollination and you all know the reason for the same. The reason is that the offsprings which are being produced by the self pollination are not healthy. The offsprings which come are, are uh, not of new varieties. And therefore, the nature always uh, favors to go for cross pollination. One of the contrivances which we studied in the last slide was unisexuality. I hope that thing is pretty clear to you all. Next contrivance, let us continue in this slide, that is decogamy. Okay? Students, the definitions are very important in this chapter. What is decogamy? In simple words, decogamy means different timings of the maturation of the male and the female reproductive part. The male reproductive part that is androsium and the female reproductive part that is gynosium. Okay? When the timings of maturation are different, try to understand what do we mean uh, the timing should be different. It is obvious when the pollen, when the anthers are mature, the, they will burst and they will release the pollen but the timings of the release of pollen and they dropping on the stigma right when they drop on the stigma the stigma should be mature enough to receive the pollen okay so when the timings match only then the self pollination is going to happen if you all try to recollect in the part of self-pollination, I had made this point pretty clear. When will the self-pollination occur? One point was if the flowers are bisexual and the second point was if both the male and the female are going to undergo the uh, maturation at the same time, right? So decogamy means when both the reproductive parts mature at different times yes this is going to favor only cross pollination and here you would see two different types of decogamy devices one is pro tandri and second is proto guinea pro tandri means this is the technique or a device where the male reproductive part matures before the female reproductive part. The anthers mature before the stigma is recipient. As in, the anthers would burst open to release the pollen, but the stigma is yet close to accept the pollen. It's obvious, neither the autogamy nor getonogamy is going to be favored. Here, only cross-pollination is going to be favored. The common example is bindi, and sweet pea. Bindi you can write okra for the uh, better with this thing. Uh, protogeny. Protogeny means uh, here the female reproductive part that is the stigma matures before the anther. The stigma is recipient. It is waiting for the pollens to drop but pollen is not yet matured. The anther is not yet matured to burst open and release the uh, Pollens, right? So here the common examples are custard, apple, custard apple, uh, common apple, normal apple and people flowers. Okay. So this is second important device or contrivance which is going to only favor uh, cross pollination and not self pollination. Third device which you all need to understand is self sterility. Self means could Sterility means I don't want to undergo the process of reproduction. Yes, that you mean by sterile. What is the difference between sterile and fertile? Fertile are those which can reproduce. Sterile are those which cannot reproduce. Self-sterility. Self means I am not willing to undergo reproduction. In simple words, here if I talk about one bisexual flower, right? Though the uh, androsium and gynosium might mature at the same time. 
the pollens would drop on the stigma but the stigma still says no for the pollens the stigma is yet not accepting the pollen maybe for multiple reasons now if you actually try to understand it biologically then maybe there are no chemical bondings between the uh, uh, the compounds present on the pollen and the compounds present on the stigma okay if you uh, do the research in depth right so that is that device is given the term of self sterility where the stigma itself makes uh, uh, makes itself self sterile that means even after the pollen been dropping uh, on the stigma of the same flower it is not going to accept the pollen or it is not going to favor the pollen to grow on it okay so here the common examples are the ray florets of the uh, sunflower okay i hope by now you all are pretty clear what are ray florets of sunflower okay i will just read out the condition of self sterility it's a condition in which the stigma even after receiving the pollen from the anthers of the same flower fail to further grow okay so that means usne khud hi apne darwaze band kar diye hain apne khud ke pollens ke liye okay it feels like it is not ready for marriage right now okay in simple words usko shaadi abhi nahi karni khatam bhale decision ho gaya hai but usko uh, the stigma the girl is not ready to get married okay so yes yeah, koi zabardasti nahi hogi that is called as self sterility right so this is the third condition where strictly no self pollination is going to uh, take place obviously the flower will have to go out and search for a cross pollinating flower okay the next condition is hercogamy hercogamy ka matlab hota hai there is a mechanical barrier okay mechanical barrier as in if this is the flower okay if this is the structure of flower stigma ke upar एक हुड की तरह स्ट्रक्चर होता है हुड यू ऑल अंडरस्टैंड एवरी वन नोज राइट दीज डेज देर आर टी शर्ट और देर आर दी स्वेट शर्ट विथ हुड हुडी ठीक है जो जनरली सर पे यूल हैव दैट हुड राइट सो वॉट इज अ हुड इट्स अ कवर ओके सो वट हैपन्स इज विद हेल्प ऑफ दिस हुड दिस वेन द हुड इज देयर ऑन योर हेड ऑब्वियसली कोई तो आपके कोई चीज आपके सर पे नहीं गिरेगी ओके सो सेम पैटर्न स्टिग्मा के ऊपर एक हुड की तरह कवरिंग हो जाती है ओके एंड दैट कवरिंग दर इज अ मैकेनिकल बैरियर दैट कवरिंग माइट बी ऑफ अ पेटल ऑल्सो ठीक है आप पेटल को हुड की तरह रख दो तो इट इज ऑब्वियस कि क्या होता है पोलिंग्स ड्रॉप नहीं होंगे ठीक है वेन दर इज अ कवरिंग ऑफ अ हुड so what is going to happen over the stigma so even if both of them mature the androecium and gynoecium mature at the same time but still if the stigma is covered by a hood it is obvious that the pollens are not going to drop on the same structure of the stigma here the common example is that of the pansy flowers where you see that the hood covering the stigma acts as the mechanical barrier in the pansy flowers okay so that is called as hercogamy the fifth and the uh, last contrivance or a device which is going to only favor cross pollination is heterostyly okay now heterostyly ka matlab hota hai here um, you grow the flowers or you grow the plants in such a way that the flowers in them grow in the pattern where the stigma are tall and not the stigma i would precisely say the carpels are tall and the anthers are short theek hai now please try to understand uh, please think of the structure of the flower ye hai stig uh, carpel ka structure उसमें 
ये है आपका स्टेमिन का स्ट्रक्चर ठीक है ट्रांसफर होना होगा तो ऑब्वियस है कि तुमको कार्पल छोटा स्टेमिन बड़ा चाहिए सो दिस शुड बी दी आइडियल स्टैंडर्ड स्ट्रक्चर राइट फॉर सेल्फ पोलिनेशन टू टेक प्लेस ओके सो दैट द ट्रांसफर हैपन फ्रॉम हियर टू हियर ओके सो स्टैंडर्ड डायग्राम में ये ऐसे होना चाहिए ओके बट बट हेटरोस्टाइली में क्या करते हैं हम लोग वॉट इज दिस कंडीशन हम प्लांट्स को ही ऐसे ग्रो करते हैं जब मैं बोल रही हूँ प्लांट्स को ऐसे ग्रो कर रहे हैं मतलब वी आर इंड्यूसिंग सच डिवाइज इन दैम दैट दी फ्लावर्स ग्रो इन सच पैटर्न दैट द कार्पल्स आर टॉलर एंड दी स्टेमेंट आर शॉर्ट अब मुझे बताओ ऐसे ट्रांसफर कैसे होगा ऐसे तो पॉसिबल ही नहीं होना ओके दिस ट्रांसफर इज नॉट पॉसिबल एट ऑल सो वेन दिस ट्रांसफर इज नॉट पॉसिबल एट ऑल सेल्फ पॉलिनेशन इज नॉट पॉसिबल सो इट इज ऑबियस दैट दिस प्लान हैज टू बाई डिफॉल्ट ग्रो फॉर गो फॉर क्रॉस पॉलिनेशन ओके सो दीज आर दी फाइव यर आई हैव डिस्टेड डाउन फोर एंड वन इन दी प्रीवियस स्लाइड सो दीज आर दी फाइव इंपॉर्टेंट डिवाइजेस और द फाइव इंपॉर्टेंट कॉन्ट्रीवेंसेस which are going to favor only cross pollination and no self pollination i repeat the five devices unisexuality dicogamy dicogamy mein there are two types protandry protogyny self sterility hypogamy and heterostyly okay i hope this part of the chapter is also clear right so till now my dear students we are through with three parts okay the first part where we understood the introduction as well as we also understood that nature is going to favor pollination only between the same species okay that is the one part of the chapter second part talks about the two different types of pollination the self pollination and the cross pollination the third part of the chapter talks about the different contrivances which favors or the different devices which favors only cross pollination okay i hope ye teeno part aapke pretty clear hai still if you have any other doubt yes as i said whenever we meet in the sessions your all the doubts will be clear okay moving on to the next a uh, part of this chapter the next part talks about part of this chapter the next part talks about the agents of the cross pollination as i said now that we are not focusing on self pollination kyunki humko self pollination karna hi nahi hai jab weak of offspring paida ho rahi hai to why would we focus on self pollination so might as well talk more on cross pollination what are the agents which can bring cross pollination there are two agents okay two agents which can bring cross pollination biotic agents and abiotic biotic ka matlab hota hai living abiotic ka matlab hota hai non living right biotic agents mein aate hain aapke insects birds and certain animals ए बायोटिक एजेंट्स ऑन दी अदर हैंड इंक्लूड्स ऑल दी नॉन लिविंग कॉम्पोनेट्स बट मेजरली विच कॉज पोलिनेशन आर विंड एंड वाटर यस ओनली दीज टू आर गोइंग टू कॉज पोलिनेशन ओके एंड डिपेंडेंट अपॉन दीज एजेंट्स पोलिनेशन फर्दर इज क्लासिफाइड इन टू फाइव डिफरेंट कैटेगरीज ओके मतलब डिपेंडिंग अपॉन दी इंसेक्ट्स बर्ड्स एंड सर्टन एनिमल्स depending upon the wind and water you can classify the pollination into five different categories okay as i have mentioned over here each category okay each category of what i'm talking about each category of pollination has its certain characteristic to promote the chances of pollination what do i mean by the statement मेरा मतलब है अगर ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड इफ एन इंसेक्ट नीड्स टू बी इफ एन इंसेक्ट इज पोलिनेटेड ओके 
if insect is responsible for the process of pollination it is obvious कि इंसेक्ट को अट्रैक्ट करने के लिए फ्लावर को अट्रैक्टिव होना पड़ेगा है ना वाई बिकॉज इंसेक्ट इज अ लिविंग क्रीचर ऑब्वियस है बट अगर एक विंड पोलिनेशन करता है तो विंड को अट्रैक्ट करने की जरूरत है क्या थिंक अबाउट इट डू यू नीड टू अट्रैक्ट विंड टूवर्ड्स यू नो विंड इज एनी विच यू इज गोइंग टू ब्लो you need not attract wind towards you but if i want you to attract insects towards you if i want you to attract birds towards you definitely me if i am an uh, if i am a flower i need to be attractive so that the insect comes to me i need to have good fragrance so that the insect comes to me i need to produce good nectar so that the insect comes to me so try to understand the flower will have to show different features depending upon the different type of pollination okay so in this part of the chapter uh, in this part of the yeah chapter i'm going to explain you all the different features which a flower needs to have okay depending upon the different type of pollination right so yes please concentrate the first type is entomophily what did i say entomophily again spellings are very important please write it in your books and learn them entomophily means they are insect pollinated flowers okay these are also called as entomophilous flowers since insect is a living creature it's a living organism so these are the common characteristics which you would see in birds also and maybe in animals also to an extent okay so what are the common characteristics which you would see the flowers need to be a uh, need to be large they need to be brightly colored they need to produce a large amount of nectar they need to be uh, having good fragrance right so these following characteristics is a necessity okay that is for sure if you have to attract a insect towards you okay like a honey bee to be attracted ye characteristics hona zaruri hai but apart from that if you want an insect to pollinate what other characteristics are seen in the um, in the flower is the pollen grains generally are sticky why agar wo sticky nahi honge to wo insect ke body pe stick kaise ho jayenge because the insect is not going to stay there on the flower for 24 hours no it's just going to come it's going to collect the nectar it's going to fly off and go on to the another flower okay so it, it needs to be the process needs to be very quick okay so it is obvious that the pollen grains okay which are being released by the flowers they also have to be very sticky so that they can stick on the body of the uh, insect one thing second thing is the stigma on the other hand the stigma on which the um, insect is going to deposit the pollen even that needs to be sticky okay and another thing is the stigma should not be hanging out okay why because if it is hanging out there is a possibility that it the pollen might drop the pollen might fall off okay because the nectar uh, the insect is going to come to the flower only for nectar uh, uh, collection right so if the uh this thing is out if the uh, stigma is out to fir wo to possible nahi hoga theek hai to stigma sticky ho samajh mein aata hai but wo it should not be hanging out okay apart from that aise bhi dekha gaya hai when the flowers are small if it is in case of insect pollinated so they are always seen in clusters cluster matlab group mein so that the insects are attracted towards them acha group of flowers is called what it is called in floral sense okay yes 
A common example of insect pollinated flower is dahlia, right? The next uh, type of pollination is ornithophily. It is also called as bird pollinated flowers or ornithophilus flowers. Common examples of these are begonia and canna, right? Now the characteristics would be majorly common, okay? Because since it is also a living creature, you need to attract the birds and for attracting birds, you need flowers which are uh, showy and attractive producing large nectar however smell is not fragrance is not required why that is because uh, birds do not have sense of smell so that can be eliminated okay the third type is elephophily elephophily is a, a type of a pollination which has been brought about by elephants yes strange to hear but ha elephants bhi pollination karte hain now elephants pollination ek special type ke flowers pe karte hain which is called as rafflesia flowers ye rafflesia flowers ground level pe paaye jate hain and these are too big in size imagine how do elephants come bring about this pollination so when the elephants walk on the uh, ground so uh, when they while walking okay when they stamp on the flowers so they pick up the pollen and when they stamp on the other flowers they drop the pollen on the stigma okay so stamp mein aisa nahi hai ki wo bechare pure flower ko maar dete hain it's only like putting one foot and then taking up another step and then okay so these flowers are quite big enough and they are gently present on the ground level so you all can imagine please use your imagination a little bit because uh, since it is an uh, pollination brought about by flowers to flowers hawa mein nahi paaye jayenge they would be seen on the ground level only since elephants hawa mein nahi udte hain they are walking on the ground itself okay so these are the three types of pollination which are being uh, brought about by the biotic uh, factors right the next uh, uh, type two types of pollination i would be discussing in the next slide thank you